Um, we did make a kind of major mistake yesterday, and it's my fault. There's an error in the table. Okay, so I want you to find that table that was in the notes. Um, right there. And there's a mistake in it. Okay, and it affected one of our problems yesterday. Not bad, but there we do we need to fix it. So make sure you fix this, because um, we're in the process of trying to memorize these things. This in front of the sign shouldn't be a one, right? All of these are even. All of those are supposed to be odd, aren't they? Should have been an X. So that's my fault because I did not. I think I probably noticed it last year and didn't correct it. So totally my fault. We will fix it now. Okay. So let's not do any more problems wrong. Because I was trying to do another problem this morning that had it in. And I'm like, there's not, something's not right. They're not supposed to both be one. Okay. So let's go back to, um, it affects the one from yesterday. I think it was the first one we did here. It's this McLaurin one. So we're just going to fix up that A problem. Because look, we started with one. Obviously can't start with one. So it's got to be X. Okay. Which And it's just going to affect the first term. So that's all we're going to do is fix the first term. So this should have been x squared to the first power, right? So this first one should have just been an x squared. So get that fixed on all of those. And the good news is, is we didn't do any more damage than that. Okay. But when we're looking at that table, let's make sure that it's an x. So if it's the odd ones, it starts with the exponent of 1. Okay. If it's the even ones, it starts with the 1, then x squared. Okay, I am going to come down, and we were starting to work on this one right here, okay? Um, we are supposed to find the first three non-zero terms of the McLaurin series for each of the given functions, okay? Um, and we have the function f of x equals e to the x arc times arctangent of x. So we went into our table, right? And we pulled off the series for um, our designer series for e to the x and our designer series for arctangent. Okay, and we've all started multiplying them together. Well, that's quite a multiplication problem. Okay, I started to draw, and then the announcements went off. I started to draw a box. Okay, so I'm going to use a box to keep my work organized. I don't really know exactly how much I'm going to need yet. Okay, um, so I'm going to kind of draw an open ended box until I figure out how many terms I really need to use. Because I need to make sure I have four, I was it three or four? The first three non-zero terms. So if things cross out because they cancel, I have to be careful of that, okay? So I am gonna write my e to the x, and it doesn't matter which order you write this in. I'm gonna write my e to the x across the top. Um, x squared, sometimes it's better Let's see what I did last year. Oh, I just left it as squared. Yeah, I just left it as factorial. But sometimes it's better if we multiply the factorial out. Just depends on the problem. All right. And then my other one was one. Oh, sorry. I'm going to use orange. One minus x cubed over three plus x to the fifth over five. We probably don't need the seventh power part, but. Just in case stuff cancels out, we've got it there. Oh, now I understand why I crossed out that out and said four. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the multiplication just like I would have when we did like foiling or a two by three polynomial, okay? So what's one times one? Good, one times x. One times x squared over two factorial. Yeah, over two factorial, right? And then the same thing here, x cubed over three factorial. I'm gonna go down to the next row and multiply that one out, okay? Or at least a few of the terms. Okay, so what is negative x cubed over 3 times 1? Good. And then negative x cubed over 3 times x would be negative x to the what? 
x cubed times x would be fourth power over three. Okay. Now, um, and if I went one more, just so you can see what happens with the factorial business, I could do, um, it would be negative x to the fifth over, and I could do three times two factorial. I could also write six. That's fine as well. Okay. Um, and then if I went like one more this direction, it would be x to the fifth over five. Now, I totally have overkilled what I need. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you understood what was there. If we needed more than three terms, we've got more than three. Okay. So we're actually going to practice. Let's do this. Let's practice this one to four terms. Okay. Just so you get the idea of practicing. So you can actually see a couple things adding up other than just the first row. Okay. So if I was going to do, I'm going to combine like terms now. And remember, we start with the one and we go up in the exponents. Okay. When we're doing, when we're doing a series like this. So I see that I have one. I see that I have X. I have nothing to combine with it. Right. Um, I see that I have an X squared and there's no other X squareds in there. So I would write X squared and I could write, expand my two factorial. I know that's just two. Okay. Um, this X cubed here is the same as saying X cubed over six. Right. So let's say if I went to that fourth term, even though the original question only said three terms, I'm going to practice the fourth term. Um, if that's a six in the denominator, I'd need to make this a six in the denominator, right? So it'd be negative two X cubed. And then I would combine together this and this. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can get it back. There it goes. Okay. Combine together this and this. All right. So that would make it negative. Ooh, not there. Negative X cubed over six, right? I went to the fourth term there and that's it. So even though it looks kind of horrendous to begin with, it really isn't so bad. Okay. All right. We're going to try the next one. Um, and I, we're going to, I did finally figure it out this morning. I did not do the next one last year in the interest of time. I cut it out, but I wanted you to see one with division. Okay. We really only needed the first row of the table. Yeah. If there had, if it had been a different series, so let's, that's why I went to the fourth term because in the if we wanted the fourth term, we would have had to have this. Oh my goodness, how do I keep erasing it today? I would have needed, I needed this and that added together. Does that make sense? If they had asked me for five terms, I then would have had to go to the fourth power. If they had asked me for six terms, I would have now needed the fifth power, which would have been this one and this one as well. Okay, does that make sense? Just depends on how many terms they want. They're probably not going to ask for more than three or four. Okay. All right. So if we look at the next one, the next one they want us to expand or to find the polynomial for is tangent of X. And again, we're going to try to build off of what we know. Okay. Um, and I want to, I'm going to pr probably use something other than multiplication this time. The idea was, is what did it say at the top? Multiplication and division of the power series. Okay. So what's another name for tangent? Think back to trig. Good, sine over cosine. And we happen to know both of those series, right? They are both over here in our table. Our sine series has an X at the beginning. We're gonna make sure we correct that. All right, so I'm gonna write those out. Um, I'm probably gonna go three or four terms here. We're still only gonna find the first three terms, okay? And we're gonna do some algebra we haven't done in a while. So sine is X um, minus X cubed over three factorial um, plus X to the fifth over five factorial, technically plus dot, dot, dot. I'm only gonna go three out so far. If I need more, I can always write more. And then cosine is one minus X squared over two factorial plus X to the fourth over four factorial plus dot, dot, dot. All right. My goal is to divide one polynomial into another. We've done it this year, but it's been a long time. We did it very early in the fall. We reviewed this. Okay. Um, you all remember some long division, right? 
Oh yeah. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to practice our long division while I am doing this. I'm going to multiply out the factorials. So I'm going to write it as their, 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 the number versus the factorial. Okay. I think that's going to make our denominators a little bit easier. I am also going to leave gaps of space in there for in case an X squared comes up or in case an X, remember how you're supposed to put a zero for whatever skipped. I'm just going to leave a space rather than writing the zero. Okay. If you want to write the zero, you can. Okay. I'm trying to not make it too cluttered. Okay. So I've got X and then I'm going to go minus X cubed over three factorial is six. And then I'm going to leave a gap of space because there should be an X to the fourth plus X to the fifth over, I think five is 120, right? So I'm just going to start with those three. We'll see if we need more. We can always add more. We're, again, we're going to try to find the first three terms of that series. Okay. All right. On the outside, I know I've got one minus, and this one I don't need the gaps of space because I'm not having to do some addition and subtraction and stuff in it there. Uh, two factorials, just two plus x to the fourth over uh, four factorial, I believe is 24. And if I've messed up any of those numbers, let me know. So I'll fix them. Okay, now I'm gonna go and do my long division process. And I'm gonna stop my long division once I have three terms above the long division bar, okay? So how many times does one divide x? x times. So now I'm going to distribute that x through everything. Okay. Remember we use long division sometimes when we need to create something to integrate. That's where we had used it before if it didn't work out, like we couldn't use one of our u subs or something else. Okay. It's been a long time since we've done a u substitution, hasn't it? Got to go back to that. All right, I'm going to distribute this through. So x, and then what's x times x squared? And I'm going to line that up under the x cubed, and it's going to be negative, and we're going to have a 2 underneath. And then I'm going to distribute through this one. So x times x to the fourth is what? x to the fifth, and it's still divided by 24. Technically, it's a plus sign. All right. What am I supposed to do now? Change the signs. Get some minus. That one's going to go plus. That one's going to go minus. Okay. The good news is, is our first column cancels out like it's supposed to, right? Second column, I'm going to need a common denominator. What am I going to use as my common denominator? Six. Okay. And it's up to you how you want to do this. I don't want to make it too messy in there. I'm going to do some work off to the side, I think, um, for my common denominator. So I'm going to say this is six. I would have had to multiply it by three, right? So when I add those two things up, I would get 2x cubed over 6. Do we agree with that? What does that reduce to, that 2 6? One third. So I would just get x cubed over 3. The simpler we have that, the better it's going to be for our arithmetic and stuff later. Okay. All right. Um, check out, does 24 divide 120? I think it might. By five. By five. Okay. So I know that I can keep, I'm going to try to add those up, right? Well, I can keep that. I need to multiply this one by five, right? So negative five X to the fifth over 24, or sorry, over 120, not 24. What is going on? Over 24. Okay. So I'm adding those things up, right? So, ooh, boy. All right, so that would give me negative, what is going on? Every time I touch the corner, it doesn't want to write. Uh, negative 4x to the fifth over 120. What does that reduce to? How many times does 4 go into 120? 30. Okay, so that would be negative x to the fifth over 30. So it's a really complicated looking long division problem. We've never done a long division problem like this with 
faction or with um, coefficients that are fractions. Okay. Some is you can totally handle it. It just it looks different than what we've seen before. And again, I probably wouldn't put this one on a quiz. The other one, yeah, but this one probably not. But I don't want you to walk into the AP test and go, well, Mrs. Ballard never showed us that. Okay, when we've got the time to let's do one that's division. Okay, we're not going to overemphasize it, but we're going to try one. All right, so now we're going to ask ourselves, what times one is x cubed plus three? Yeah, x cubed plus three. So I'm going to add x cubed plus three. Uh, sorry, x to the third over three. I don't know why I said x cubed plus three. And Noelle totally repeated it. She's very good. Repeated exactly what I said. All right, we're going to distribute this through now. Okay, so this x cubed over three times one would be x cubed over three. x cubed over 3 times negative x squared over 2 would be negative x to the fifth over 6. Everybody good with that? Okay. Long division, what's our next step? Change the signs. Good. So the goal is our first column cancels. Yay right? Our second column, we need to add up a little bit. I'm going to do some common denominator work off to the side. So I've got negative x to the fifth over 30. I've got to make the six out of 30. What do I have to multiply by? Five. So let's see, what is negative x and positive five x? Four x, right? Over 30, which would reduce to 2x to the fifth over 15. Make sure my arithmetic's right. I don't always do it right. Yeah. Oh, okay, good question. Because if I went one more, we would get x to the seventh. And is x to the seventh on my list? No. And I only am going for the first three terms. If I needed to do more, I could do more, right? I have that option of going more, but I'm stopping at three, so I'm, that's why I stopped there. Okay. What's wrong? This? Okay. okay I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see it all at one time here. Okay. So now I have to ask myself how many times does one divide this thing here? My third term, wouldn't it be this thing, this ugly thing here? And now technically I could distribute it and multiply it out and all that stuff, but do I have my first three terms? Yeah. Okay. It was kind of ugly, but not impossible to do. Okay. If I had to do division, and those were a complicated one, maybe it wouldn't be as bad. Maybe we'd get lucky and it'd be like e to the x instead of cosine. It'd be maybe a little easier. Okay. All right. So you can do what we saw multiplication operations we can do um, to create new series. We saw division operations we can do to create new series. We saw yesterday where we can substitute something in, right? Like we substitute in kind of with a U sub, we can substitute things in and create new series. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, would they give us this problem with integers or no? Um, they could, but that would be really mean. Okay. Does that make sense? They could. Where the, you're probably going to see the tailor come in, maybe not in the multiplication or division. You might see it come in more in one of these that we did yesterday. Okay. They might say use a tailor and then do like an XC equals one or something up in one of these. And then you just would substitute in the X squared and then a, an X minus one in there. Okay. Or plus one or whatever it is. Okay. All right. We do have a tailor coming up here. Um, we're going to look at example seven. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we did it. We didn't do any by derivative, did we? Um, we're going to find one by integration. Um, I think we noticed when we were doing sine and cosine, right? I just want you to, before we do the integration one, um, I could also, we're going to do, we're going to find some power series with integration, but I could also find some with derivatives. So, so, so look at sine. If I take the derivative of sine, what's the derivative of x? 
one. The derivative of x cubed over 3 factorial is 3x squared over um, 3 times 2 times 1. I don't know why it's doing that. It's just 2. Isn't it just this? So to go from sine to cosine, I could just take the derivative. It's putting little white spots up there everywhere I touch. Isn't that weird? Maybe I'm just zoomed in too much. Okay. So you can also find by derivative. We're going to try by integration. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that this problem is not pretty. Okay. Um, and we might not worry about interval of convergence. We might just look at just finding the power series. So let's cross off interval of convergence because it's pretty, it makes it even worse. Okay. I will put up a video if you're super curious about interval of convergence. Um, the guest teacher, I sometimes put videos up. He has all the work for interval of convergence. So I will put that up there for you if you want to look at it. Um, but let's just try to focus on creating the power series part. Okay. Um, notice where is it centered this time? It's centered at one. So this one's a Taylor. Okay. So I've got to get it created and center, centered at one. Okay. Um, we're going to look at something for, we're trying to find natural log, which is nothing that is on our table here. Right. Well, actually it is right. It's right there. So we're going to try to prove that one actually right now. Okay. Um, but we're going to start with the geometric. All right. So we're going to start by using geometric to try to prove our natural log one. Okay. Um, hopefully we remember that the geometric, um, it looks like we have to have that a over one minus R format for geometric. If I have that, I know the summation is a sub one times R to whatever the N power usually. Okay. Um, but that's the format that I get. Okay. And I totally, when I was, I was kind of watching and studying, I'm probably expanded wrong yesterday, but I'm going to fix it right now. Cause we're going to use one of the same things we did yesterday. Okay. So I am looking for something that kind of looks geometric, um, that I could work with and try, I'm going to try to eventually build, um, natural log out of it. So if I think about it, that we're trying to find an integration for natural and get to natural log as my answer. Okay. What's the derivative of natural log? 1 over x, right? So we know that if we integrate 1 over x, we get to the natural log. And I know I'm not using a dx and a plus c. I'm just kind of thinking out loud, OK? So if I could find something that was in that 1 over something range, I might be able to build the natural log of x, just like we kind of we built sine of x squared yesterday, OK? So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to choose. I'm not going to choose this 1 over x1, one, actually. I'm going to choose this one right here. I'm going to try to build it off of a geometric. Okay. So I'm going to use that one right there. So I've got one over one plus X. Okay. If I'm going to put it, in, I want it more in this geometric format though. And I need, so I need it to be a minus. So the way that we create that is we would do one over one minus negative X. That makes it geometric. So we're pretending we don't have our power series table at all is what we're really pretending. Okay. Okay. So if I'm going to actually expand that series, okay, I know with the geometric, I'm going to start at, um, my a value is going to be at one. Okay. Cause we said we're centered at one. Okay. And I'm going to, and my R value in this case would be negative X. So A is going to be one and R is going to be negative X. Okay. So I'm starting with one. Okay. To get the second term, when I'm talking about geometric, I multiply by the common ratio. And that's something that we've missed yesterday. And we've kind of missed overall because that's the part of algebra two, a trig you guys didn't get. Okay. So to create a geometric series, we keep multiplying by the common ratio to get the next term. Okay. So I'm going to multiply my negative X by one, and that would give me negative X. I could probably just, instead of writing plus, I could write it as minus X. Okay. To get the next one, I could, I would be multiplying by negative X again, which would give me negative X 
squared. If I do it again, I would get a multiply by negative x again, I would get negative x cubed, and so on and so on and so on. So that is what my series looks like for one plus x. Okay. Which if we look at our designer series table, that's exactly what they gave us, right? So we've, we've, we've proven that. All right, the problem is, is that's not quite the one over X that we wanted to be able to integrate to get back to natural log. So, but I'm gonna try to, again, I'm gonna try to build it, okay? So I'm gonna try to integrate um, this here. So if I integrate one over one plus X dx, I know when I integrate that, that I would get the natural log of one plus X, right? Does everybody agree with that, right? The one over the denominator. There's no chain rule. The chain rule would just be a one. Or sorry, not chain rule, U substitution. The U substitution would just be a one. So that means that the expansion of this would mean I would need to integrate this thing right here. Okay, so I'm going to actually integrate it. 1 minus x times, I'm going to go ahead and, I know when I square it would become positive x squared minus x cubed plus dot 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 dx. Really should be in that like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to integrate this. So when I integrate one, what do we get? X, good. When I integrate negative X, what do we get? Over two, good. It's been a while since we've done that easy of an integration, right? Plus X, what? Three over three, good. Minus X to the fourth over four, good. Let's talk about our, um, power series general term here, okay? So let's think about what we just had to do to do that integration, right? First of all, what's happening with the signs? Alternating. alternating. How do I write alternating? Yep, negative one to the n, okay? And then um, look at your term numbers, okay? So this is term number one, term number two, term number three, term number four. What's going on with the variable on the X? Same as the term number, different as the term number? Mm -hmm. Same, so I just need to make it an N. Okay, and then look at your denominators. What do we notice? Different. Same as the term, so it would just be N. Okay, there's one thing we have to fix, but I'm gonna give you a second, make sure it's all written and then we'll fix the one thing. There's one of our exponents that's not right. Okay, look at your negative one. If I put a one into it, isn't it going to be, um, actually, I should have started this at one, huh? Let me start that at one. Okay, so if I put a one into it, what should the sign of the first one be? Negative, what do we have? Positive. So the way that you fix that, is either you do a plus one or a minus one. I'm going to go minus one. So it'd be n minus one. So it'd be, in this case, it would be zero. The next one would make it one. The next one would make it two. Okay. So if you ever have to switch your alternating signs, either add a plus one or a minus one, it really doesn't matter which one you do. Okay. And it will get the signs to alternate the right way. Okay. Problem is, is that that's not, the natural log of one plus X is not what we want, right? We want the natural log of, just x. Okay. So the way that I would create that, if I have the nat, I want the natural log of x is the same thing as saying the natural log of one plus x minus one. Do we agree that those are the same statement? Because what happens with this one and that one? They cancel, right? There was another thing that we needed to do too, remember? Where was it supposed to be centered? At one, didn't that just center it at one right there? 
So what that means is I need to take my series that I created and I need to plop an X minus one into it, okay? So we've got X minus one minus X minus one squared over two plus X minus one cubed over three plus, sorry, not plus, minus X minus one to the fourth over four plus dot, 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 plus sum as N equals one to infinity, negative one to the N minus one times X minus one to the N over N. And if you look at the chart, you'll notice that that was our series expansion for natural log that we got on the chart, right? So we just proved this one. Okay. I'll give you a minute if you need to still write. Okay, we are going to try to prove the arctangent one now, okay? Through integration again, okay? Um, I want you to, you got to dig deep. What's the derivative of arctangent, if you remember? Go back through your notes, find it. Find the derivative of arctangent or use Google and Google it. One of the two. So we got to know that one. a squared x squared something like that right everybody okay with that so when i integrate that i should get our tangent okay so that's where i'm going to start is with that the one over one plus x squared okay and we're going to see if we can build an integral power to find a power series for our tangent again i'm not going to mess with interval of convergence okay all right so i am starting here one over one plus x squared i'm going to use my geometric trick again Okay, so I'm using the geometric on them all, okay? All right, so if I know it has to be geometric, I know it has to be A over one minus an R. So to create the minus R, we would say negative X squared like that. You do the negative negative. All right, my A is equal to what? One, good. What's my uh, R equal to this time? Good, negative x squared. All right, so it's expanded a few terms. I'm just gonna go like three or four terms. I know my first term is one, and then I multiply by my r. So my next term would be negative x squared. My next term would be negative x squared squared, right? Because I have to multiply by itself. My next one would be negative x squared cubed, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so we've built our, our, our geometric series to start. I know that when I integrate one over one plus x squared dx, we get arctangent, right? That's just the solution, it's the integral of it. So in order to get the arctangent um, power series, I am going to integrate this series that we created here. So we've got one, I'm gonna go ahead and expand it here. So one minus, Make sure I'm looking at the right line. One minus x squared. That's going to make it positive x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus dot 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 dx. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and integrate it yourself. You should be able to do that. Bonus if you can get the general term at the end. Yeah, I need to see your ID.
Go ahead. Yeah, take that and the pass. Right, let me get it connected again and then we'll see how we're doing. All right, so x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 5 minus x to the 7th over 7. Is that what we're looking at? We try the general term a little bit. Um, n equals 0 to infinity of, what happens for the alternating signs part? Negative 1 to the n, right? And then x to the okay if i made did you guys make your n equal to zero or to one zero okay so we got it we got to base it off of that so this is the zero term first term second term third term right if i went to one i would change it a little bit okay so you might be close in your pattern so we got to figure out what's going on how do i get to from one to three and then from two to five Okay, so plus two, it looks like, well, it's plus two to get to the three, but it's plus three to get to the five and plus four to get to the seven. There's something to do with two. What would happen if I multiplied by two? So let's try that. Let's just play with that. I'm going to use a different color and play with it underneath. If I did uh, two times the term number, that gives me two. How would I get to the three? Okay, add one. So let's try that. So let's try the 2 times 2 plus 1. What's 2 times 2? 4 plus 1 is? Okay, let's see if it works for the 7. 2 times 3 plus 1. What's 2 times 3? 6 plus 1 is? Does that make sense, what I ended up doing that time? That one was a little bit harder on the general term. So 2n plus 1. And look at your denominators. Isn't it the same? 2n plus 1. Okay. I could, if I had started at one, it would have been a different, it just depends on where you start it. We chose to start at zero this time. Okay. And then look at what we had in the, um, over here. Did we, did we end up proving it? So you can start with that geometric thing and sometimes you can integrate to get there. Um, again, these are not as common. You might hit, maybe you might see like one in the free response, if that. All right, but I don't want to send you out there and not have taught you this. Okay, I had plenty of students before your time. Okay, before I even knew that we were supposed to do this, that have passed the AP test. Okay, without knowing this part. So you guys are more advanced than they are. All right, one of them is a math teacher in Utah right now. So, and she taught her college job was to was teaching like a TA position teaching calculus. So, so, all right. I'm going to stop there. We're not going to finish the rest of these. Okay, so we're not going to worry about approximating. So we're going to get rid of the rest of the examples. So the good news is that was it for unit 10. Woohoo, right?
Um, I think I put an assignment out there. I think there's one out there. So if you want to start kind of perusing that, you can. Um, we will make tomorrow some kind of review. We'll see how good of a review it is as to whether I give the quiz on Monday or Tuesday. Okay. I know you all are pulling for Tuesday. So we'll see how I do tonight on getting stuff ready. <laughs>